good evening. My name is Jennifer Hammondy, and I'm a board member with the National Transportation Safety Board. And with me today is Kenneth Bragg, who is a senior highway accident investigator with the NTSB. I want to start by setting expectations. We, this was our first day of what could be up to a 24-month accident investigation for the NTSB. But we did have a productive day, so I want to give you a look at what we did today. Uh, we had our drone specialists that conducted detailed surveys of the vehicles. We had investigators at the medical examiner. We also had investigators examining the vehicles. I went with the investigators to examine the vehicles. My impression was that the damage was extensive. We looked at the motor coach, we looked at the FedEx truck and one of the UPS trucks and two of the trailers and I thought that I thought it was devastating. I imagine that if you were in this accident that it was scary. The uh, NTSB staff also went to, uh, it, the family assistance staff went to the hospitals to try to reach out to the injured individuals so that they could explain the NTSB process and how we move forward. Uh, part of that process is we will issue a preliminary report in about 10 days. Our final report will come out in 18 to 24 months. They are told when those are coming out so that they anticipate that. And they are told when our final board meeting will be. And of course, they, that is a public board meeting and they are invited to that. Uh, so they are briefed along the way about our process. In addition to that, we had uh, investigators working with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, which is part of the U.S. Department of Transportation, and they oversee motor carrier safety in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. They also worked with FedEx, UPS, and ZND Tours to obtain information about the crash itself and to obtain the history of the driver and the operator. I want to talk a little bit about the accident sequence. We had one crash with two separate events. So the motor coach was traveling in the left lane westbound and passed the FedEx truck. The motor coach at one point down the road lost, the driver lost control of the vehicle. The motor coach struck a concrete median barrier, came back across the travel lanes, uh, up an embankment and rolled on the passenger side of the vehicle. The motor coach was blocking the road. At that point, the FedEx truck came upon the vehicle, could not stop, and hit the motor coach. One of the UPS trucks also hit the motor coach. Another UPS truck and a Mercedes was also involved in the accident scenario. One of the questions I'm going to get was, is, was the motor coach speeding? We don't know that at this time. The Pennsylvania State Police were able to remove the engine control module, or ECM, which is really designed to monitor engine performance, but you can get some data from it, like throttle position, speed, brake application, and sometimes steering input. We don't know what we have available to us at this time, but they were able to take that from the motor coach and they will try to download the information to see what we can get. There was also an outward facing camera on one of the commercial motor vehicles. So we we're hoping that we can get information from that and uh, see a visual uh, approaching the motor coach. The motor coach itself, yesterday I said, had 52 uh, total in the motor coach. 
It was actually 56 passengers and a driver. The, I was asked about the route it typically takes. There is one motor coach that leaves Flushing, New York at 9 p.m. and one that leaves at 10 p.m. This was the 10 p.m. motor coach. It left Flushing, New York, stopped in Manhattan. At some point it stopped in Hackensack, New Jersey, and it was headed toward New Stanton, Pennsylvania, where there would have been a crew swap. But the accident occurred about 10 miles prior to that. From New Stanton, it would have gone to Cincinnati, Ohio, Louisville, Kentucky, and then back to Flushing, New York, straight back to Flushing, New York. As far as the vehicle itself, the last inspection of the vehicle was December 17, 2019. No issues were identified. The operator's last motor carrier compliance review was November 15th, 2018. Those have to occur once every three years. Prior to that was in 2016. In both situations, no issues, no violations, and they have a satisfactory rating with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. We're still waiting for information on the driver. As I said, this is, a, it, this is gonna be a very wide-ranging, complex investigation, and we're just starting. This is day one. I wanna take a second to thank our partners. Again, I know I did that yesterday, but I can't stress enough how cooperative the Pennsylvania State Police and the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission has been. The Pennsylvania, a lot of, I don't know, across the state, but I know this particular um, uh, set of individuals has not had experience working with the NTSB before. And so when we come in, at, that can create confusion. I have to really applaud them because they have worked with us tremendously, information sharing, working together over the past day and a half, two days. And uh, I, I just really thank them for, for, for working with us. But I do want to talk about the differences between what the Pennsylvania State Police is doing and what the NTSB is doing, because I am getting a lot of questions on that. The Pennsylvania State Police is looking at this specific accident from a law enforcement perspective. The NTSB is looking at this accident with an eye toward improving safety nationwide at a national level. In 2018, there were 36,650 fatalities on our nation's roads, 36,650 deaths. Our goal is zero, zero crashes, zero injuries, and zero fatalities. And if an accident does happen, we want to make sure it's survivable. So we've issued hundreds of recommendations to get to zero and to ensure that if an accident does happen that it is survive for survivable. One example of that is lap shoulder belts on motor coaches. We have issued recommendation after recommendation to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to have lap shoulder belts on motor coaches and other vehicles. Those haven't been implemented, yet we continue to see accidents where passengers are ejected. So that's one area that we're gonna be looking at as part of this investigation. I anticipate this is gonna be our last press briefing. With that said, we're available for one-on-ones and for uh, discussions along, uh, along the way as we come out with more information. Uh, please monitor our Twitter feed at NTSB underscore newsroom. I do have one request. A lot of uh, those passengers on the vehicles were transported to hospitals after the accident. It was cold, and they, the, uh, pers EM the emergency responders wanted them away from the accident scene and out of the cold, and uh, they left the hospitals. And we need to get in touch with them to make sure they, under, they get updates and that they understand our process going forward. 
So if you're watching and you were involved in the accident or you know somebody that was involved in the accident, please email us at the following email, assistance at ntsb.gov. That's assistance at ntsb.gov. So I'm going to take uh, questions. Please raise your hand, state your name and your affiliation, and we'll start here. Somerset Daily American, in the 10 hours before the accident, had Penn Barnett been on the salting or clearing those roads at all? That's something we're looking at as part of the investigation. We do know that they use salt uh, on the roads, and we're going to look at uh, application of that leading up to uh, the accident. So that specific area, you don't know if they actually hit that? Do you know that yet? Yeah, we don't know that yet. We're looking into it, though. That will be part of the investigation. We're going to look at road construction, road design, w how the road was treated as part of the investigation. Okay. Yes. Um, do you know if you talk about lap shoulder belts when yeah. you're pushed to get them? Do you know if the driver was wearing a seatbelt or not? Uh, the question is, was the driver uh, wearing a seatbelt or not? Yeah. Do we? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we have not ascertained whether the driver was wearing a seatbelt yet, but that is something we're going to be looking into as part of the investigation. Yes? Amy Kudas, WTSI. Were there seatbelts on this tour bus? If so, what kind of belts were they? And was this little girl who was killed wearing a seatbelt? The question is uh, wh whether there was, were seatbelts, lap shoulder belts, on the vehicle and was the juvenile female wearing a seatbelt. Uh, there were no lap shoulder belts on the motor coach. Were there belts? There were not. Nothing. No seatbelts. Shelman Ingram, Pittsburgh's afternoon for about the driver. Do you know if this is the same driver that started in New York or if he is the second driver after their rest stop? Uh, the question is, was the driver involved in the accident, was the motor coach driver involved in the accident the same driver that started the route? He was. He went on duty at 10 p.m. Uh, and picked up the motor coach at that time. It was the same driver. And do you have any information on his driving record within the past year? Uh, the question is on his driving record within the past year. That is information that we have requested. We're very interested in knowing his driver re driving record, just as we are with all the drivers that were involved in this accident. Other questions? Yes. Nicole with KDKA. Um, you said today's day one, but how long do you plan to be on the ground here? And what do the next few days look like? So uh, uh, your question is, what's our process over the next couple of days? We expect to be on scene uh, seven to 10 days, uh, collecting the factual information and the perishable evidence. And what I mean by perishable evidence is the evidence that goes away once we leave the scene, uh, once we leave the area. So we're trying to collect all that now, uh, working with uh, the different parties. And then from there, we expect to have a preliminary report in 10 days, but that's just factual information. That is not analysis. Uh, that will come in about 18 to 24 months, at which point we'll have a board meeting to consider the final report and uh, the findings, the probable cause, and the recommendations. Yes. Andrew Goldstein from Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Uh, you said uh, you make recommendations about things like lap and uh, shoulder belts. Uh, what about that portion of the roadway? Have you taken a look at that yet? Is there anything about that particular part of the roadway? It was going downhill and I guess around the curve uh, that, you know, you would think preliminarily might be something you are going to take a look at to uh, improve upon? So the question is, do we look at roadway design and the state of the roadway itself? There was a curve that preceded this. We do look at that as part of each of our investigations, and we are, we do know that uh, there was resurfacing in 2019 of the westbound lanes, and it was in good shape. But that is something we'll look into further. Last question? Yes. Knowing that you've got a tour bus full of people and there are no seat belts on that bus, as somebody who's advocating for safety nationwide, how does that make the NTSB feel? The question is how does it make the NTSB feel knowing that there are tour buses without uh, 
uh, lap shoulder belts? It's a great question. As a board member, um, you know, part of our job is not just to uh, meet with the press and uh, elected officials that might be on scene and other officials with law enforcement, but it's also many times to meet with uh, families of the victims. And it is the toughest part of our job. It is hard when you see accident after accident. It's tough for our investigators, too. When you see accident after accident where a death or serious injury could have been prevented by a seatbelt, lap shoulder belt in particular, we keep, we keep recommending it. We're not going to stop. Part of my job is to try to get those recommendations implemented and our other board members are just as committed to that, so that's what we're going to keep doing. But yes, it's frustrating and it's devastating. What's the holdup to getting uh, seat belts and <clears throat> uniformity with seat belts on these buses across the state? So you're, you're a federal agency, so whatever you recommend, would it be a sweeping uh, recommendation to each state, or does each state have to approve its own laws regarding it? It's a, a great question. The question is, um, is, does each state have to approve laws for safety belts? Each state could do that. We've made recommendations to a federal agency, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, for, to require manufacturers to install uh, lap shoulder belts and, to, and, in some cases, to retrofit school buses to install uh, lap shoulder belts. And um, they have not done that so far. I'd say you should talk to the uh, Safety Administration. I know that in some of their responses in the past, it's, the discussion has been around cost-benefit analysis. But that is something for them to answer. I know you don't know at this point what caused the driver to lose control, but could you tell us some of the things you'll be looking at, some of the factors you'll be looking at? I would, I would uh, assume that the speed would be one, weather conditions, are there any other things? Distractions. Uh, sure, and sure, and really quickly to add on to that, we also have recommendations to the manufacturers themselves. Um, but back to your question on what we're going to be looking at uh, as part of our investigation, simply In terms of the cause. The cause. We look at man, machine, and the environment. So we look at the driver, the carrier, the operator itself. Uh, we look at the vehicle. And we look the in, at the environment in which it was operating in. So weather is part of that. Thank you very much. Thank you.